just like pocket posy number one I am also making a tassel for this tin can pocket posy number two but this time I'm adding some embellishments to the top of the tassel I have three little metal decorative things I got from Hobby Lobby and a key that um, I ordered from Amazon uh, I'll put the link in the description box it's a whole little package of a bunch of keys which is really nice to have now I'm going to do the rust technique again like I did on uh, pocket number one um, but it's going to be a, end up being a little bit different however I started out the same way using the uh, coffee bean chalk paint coffee bean color which is uh, Dixie Belle and I just applied the paint and while it was wet I put cinnamon on it and mashed it down with a brush and these things I needed to be able to <laughs> paint them all the way around so I just stuck them on some skewers and then stuck the skewers in some styrofoam to dry have to do a little bit of pre-planning here because I want to do a, a couple of tassels on some of these tin cans so I have to kind of pre-decide what I want to do because um, well I'll show you here in a minute um, why I need to have make the tassel before I even smash the can so this is some old trim that I had back when all that kind of stuff was popular. I've got tons of trim because I do sew. But anyway, I have this beautiful piece of uh, decoupage paper from Decoupage Queen. And just look. I mean, the colors are perfect. Now, I could just take this since it's long trim and glue it to the inside of the can before I smash it. That's the point here is it needs to look professional. But I really don't want that look, I don't think. I'm gonna make a tassel out of this. And it's not gonna be difficult. Um, in fact, look here, I've got some that's coming undone, which is great because I can use that for the tags. That'll work wonderfully.
pause here. If you haven't watched the tin can prep, um, I would go back and do that because I show how to smash the can and attaching the tassel. So that I didn't want to have to repeat in this video. So if you want to understand that, I would go back and watch that part. The prep is the same for all of these cans. Um, what I do is whatever paint I want to use, whatever color, I mix it with a little bit of baking soda to give it some tooth and I paint on two coats, letting them dry in between of course. And then my third coat, I don't use the, the thick mixture, I use the straight paint. This is Country Chic Chalk Paint in Crinoline and it's important that this this can the paint be a light or whitish color because i'm going to be decoupaging over the whole can the next step is to decide what part of the decoupage paper i want on the front i don't want to waste this sheet and use something from the center because it is a pretty good size sheet and I can use it for something else, maybe a book journal or another pocket posy, although I never duplicate the same thing twice. Um, so what I do here is decide where I want to place it and I'm trimming it so that it'll make it easier to work with. I'm going to be using just Mod Podge to adhere it. So I lay it out and figure out, okay, what part do I want to show? I want to make sure some of that rusty part is on the front side. And then I fold it around and make sure um, that where it's going to match, I've got to trim. And I don't use scissors typically when decoupaging, um, but I'm doing that here just to get it a little bit closer to matching. You will see as I get around to that point that I use a wet paintbrush and tear the edges because I want them to meet perfectly. And in decoupage, torn edges are better. Now right there, I should have not used the scissors. I should have gone ahead and used the wet paintbrush because I made it harder on myself in the end. Using the decoupage medium, I've got the paper, the rice paper placed exactly where I want it and flipped it over to the back side so that's where I'm going to begin with the decoupage. Another thing, a helpful tip, if you will use a little wadded up piece of saran wrap, um, I also use a straight piece of saran wrap to lay it down and then press the rice paper into all of those little grooves. It's important to protect that uh, with saran wrap or plastic wrap because it can tear very easily especially when working with a napkin the rice paper is a little bit tougher and you can handle it a little bit more than a napkin so i just work in small sections working around the can pressing it in i do about an inch an inch and a, or an inch and a half section at a time um, it makes it easier to manage rather than trying to do too big of an area at once. So now that I've come to the section at the back where they need to meet, I'm using that wet paint brush um, and tearing, just kind of lifting up and looking and seeing where I match and then decoupage over it. The torn edges make it harder to see where you have seamed it. And that's the reason why you want to tear your edges when you're decoupaging. To seal in your decoupage paper, you want to put a coat on top. You put it underneath as the glue. Now you're putting it the same medium, the Mod Podge, on the top as uh, to kind of seal that in. You could use a sealer if you like, but you know, the Mod Podge is out. It's just as easy to use that and it dries very quickly. So I went ahead right after I had decoupaged it and applied the coat on top. Once dry, I use a little piece of sandpaper and working in one direction downward um, 
I sand that bottom edge to remove the little paper that is left there. Now I didn't show it, but after I got this all removed, I also applied a sealer over the whole can. I believe I used Amy Howard's matte sealer, but you could use whatever water-based sealer that you have that you prefer to use. Now for additional embellishments. Um, I'm going to be using air dry clay. Iron Orchid Designs air dry clay is the best. And I'll be using one of Iron Orchid Designs trim molds for the bottom of the trim. But as I studied the can and where I had placed it, there's some typography in the decoupage paper and there was kind of a line, a, a dark line with typography above it. Well, I ended up putting that line unknowingly right towards the top of the can and I just didn't like how it looked. I wanted that to kind of be hidden, so to speak. So I was looking through all my different molds that I have and ended up using this one, uh, which is a Prima redesign mold. I got it on, on Amazon and I'll post that description, I mean that link in the description box. Anyway, I already molded one section. You can kind of see there that I have it laid out at the top of the can. Um, I thought I was going to wrap it here, there, and everywhere. I ended up only using the one piece. You might recall in the beginning of the video when I was doing the faux rust finish on the little tassel beads that I had said that I'd be doing it a little differently in the end. Well, this is what I was referring to. Um, I wanted a little higher end type look rather than it looking just so rusty. So I decided to first paint the molds with um, metallic paint. I believe it is deco art and it's chocolate brown. I love this. It, it, it's kind of a browny, bronzy color. So first I'm going to paint all of the trim with that. And that metallic paint dries rather quickly. So what I ended up doing was then using the Dixie Bell coffee bean chalk paint here and there in spots and then adding my cinnamon and doing the faux rust technique on the darker brown spots, still leaving some of that metallic chocolate brown showing through.
I really do love how this tin can pocket posy turned out. I think it's very vintage looking. Now to finish it up, I didn't film doing this because it's just kind of a repeat of uh, tin can pocket posy number one in that I add the floral foam inside the can and then I use some hot glue to add some sphagnum moss to the top of it to hide the floral foam and give it some foofy and use the same paper coated wire for the hanger for this uh, can um, as same as the number one and did the little curlicues on the side. It might be weird that I counted but I did count. I added in over 30 pieces of beautiful high-end faux flowers and faux greenery and this is the end product. Again, if you are interested in purchasing this item, you can find it on my Etsy store and I will provide that link in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed 10 Can Pocket Posy number 2, Flowers on the Vine.